how many times have you started a new AR project and found yourself rewriting the same GitHub, Slack, or SQL integration? That annoying code copy-paste repetition and lack of norms between organizations and individuals is exactly why Modal Context Protocol, or MCP, exists. MCP is an open standard released a few months ago in November 2024 by Anthropic to formalize how we feed large language models the three things they crave most extra data, good prompts, and external tools. The goal is that everyone uses it so that all tools and databases become easily accessible through the same protocol, reducing the implementation complexity of almost anything LLM related. Under the hood, it works like any basic two-party web exchange. A client, which is your chat window, IDE, or agent doing the task, sends a request and a server or the machine that actually holds the tool and data answers with what the client needs. Let's put a quick picture of the full stack before entering into each detail. Your app launches an LLM session and embeds a tiny MCP client next to it. The moment the user types a question, the LLM decides whether it can answer straight from its own weights or needs outside help. The MCP client fires an HTTP call to tools slash list on every server URL in its config. Those servers might be local Docker containers, a team-hosted VM on the intranet, or a cloud function halfway across the world. Each server responds with a JSON catalog, tool names, descriptions, and a JSON schema for accepted arguments. The LLM chooses one or chains several, hands the chosen tool name plus arguments to the MCP client, and the client invokes tools slash execute. The results are streamed back, get folded into the model's context, and the final answer is generated to the user. In short, MCP slots cleanly into existing HTTP infrastructure, one lightweight client beside the model, many purpose-built servers behind standard web ports. If that was a bit too short and dense, let me detail this a bit more. First of all, Super conveniently, our day-to-day -day application, Cloud Desktop, VS Code, Cursor, or even a bare-bones CLI boots up with a built-in MCP client or is enabled by a one-click extension, which means it immediately knows how to discover and call MCP servers, nothing extra to wire up. At launch, the client pings one or more MCP servers, each of which can sit on your laptop, your team's intranet, or halfway across the planet. One server might expose a direct line to a production database, another publishes a stash of battle-tested team prompts, a third wraps a brave search scraper for finding sources. Because an MCP server is basically a small self-contained web service, a microservice, whose behavior is defined by the MCP specification, its feature list is limited only by what you code. And once you publish it, any MCP Hour client with the proper credentials can use it. Quickly, before we go further, I just want to thank Descope for sponsoring today's video. I'll talk more about them when we hit security, because they are tackling some of MCP's toughest problems, authentication and access control. Before MCP, every new app you built had to include its own GitHub integration. If you wrote three different assistants, say a VS Code extension, a Slack bot, and a command line tool, you'd copy-paste the same GitHub API code into Alt-P. With MCP, you put that GitHub logic once into an MCP server and all your apps simply call it, no rewiring required. The best analogy I've seen to explain it is the USB. Nobody invents a fresh cable and port for every gadget, except Apple. You slide the stick into the port and the OS figures it out. MCP aims to be the USB for modal context. And here's why that matters day to day. Your MCP servers live outside the editor itself. So if you bounce from VS Code to Cursor, the new editor pings the same server URL on startup and boom, your full toolbox is already there. No reinstall and no reimport to do. Because a server is nothing more than a shareable link, you can hand that link to a teammate and the moment they drop it into their config, they get the exact same capabilities. In the future, we can think of MCP marketplaces that start selling access to premium servers. If your useful MCP server costs money to run, you can charge people using it. And even better, both OpenAI and Google have stated that their desktop ChatGPT and Gemini stacks will integrate MCP 
meaning their models will soon be able to plug directly into third-party servers. You might wonder, why do we need MCP when OpenAPI already exists? Picture OpenAPI as a printed instruction sheet taped to whatever service you are exposing. If you hit OpenAI's own chat completion endpoint, OpenAI publishes the sheet that spells out post, v1 chat completion, the fields you can pass, and the JSON you get back. Now imagine you spin up your own little service, post translate text, that first detects the language, then calls that same OpenAI route, cleans up the reply, and returns a clean chunk of text. Because you, not OpenAI, own translate text, you have to draft a fresh instruction sheet, bundle it into every client, your VS Code extension, the Slack bot, the little CLI your ops team relies on, and ship a new version each time you tweak the feature. MCP flips that model. Instead of frozen paperwork, it serves some sort of live digital menu. On startup, the app's built-in MCP client calls tools slash list, grabs the current lineup, maybe translate text, summarize article, get weather, whatever, and later hits tools slash execute to run whichever one it needs. If a teammate drops a brand new translate text tool onto the server at 3 in the morning, that menu refreshes automatically on the very next launch, no spec rewrites, no redeploys, no stale instructions, and most importantly, nothing breaking. Also, another cool point is that without MCP, you'd stitch each step together by hand. First, write code that hits the sales database API, wait for the rows to come back, then feed the data into a separate Python service you've also wired in, wait again, and finally ship the output back to the user. The language model can't see or coordinate those tools on its own. You act as the middleware every time. With MCP, the whole chain sits on the server's menu. When a user asks analyze this month's sales by city, the model's very first turn can call a get sale data tool, grab the live rows, immediately pass them to a Python analyze tool in the same breath, and return a ready-made chart all inside one round trip. The LLM orchestrates the flow automatically because it discovers both tools at startup and can invoke them back to back without you writing a single line of extra glue. So it's perfect for agentic systems that are becoming increasingly popular. By the way, if you'd like to learn more about MCP and agents, we are releasing a special course with my friend Paul from Decoding ML, teaching everything you need to know about agents, along with creating MCP servers and clients. You can find a link to the course with a very good discounted price in the description below. Unfortunately, MCP is still at its early days, which come with early headaches. Simon Wilson showed how a malicious WhatsApp message could hijack a careless MCP client by smuggling injection instructions into tool descriptions. The problem is that there's no authentication or fine-grained authorization yet. Every user who reaches a server sees every tool, including the nuclear delete record button. Context handling is also still quite rudimentary. If you hit the 128,000 token ceiling, the client chops off history without you noticing it. Load the menu with a hundred tools and the model's odds of picking the right one plummet. Because MCP offers no native logging or metrics, you won't notice the misfires unless you add monitoring yourself. Most of these headaches trace back to the same root, making sure only the right apps can call your server. The MCP spec relies on OAuth 2.1, the familiar login get a token, Handshake plus PKCE, a quick proof of possession step that prevents an attacker from hijacking that token in flight, along with dynamic client registration and server metadata discovery. Great for security, but wiring all that OAuth plumbing into a small weekend project can quickly chew up hours and derail you from the actual feature you wanted to build. And nobody wants to spend all that time researching or asking GPT for tips on security and handle that stress if you are not an expert. That's where Descope steps in. It's MCP Authentication SDK, which is called MCP Auth SDK, handles the whole OAuth process for you. 
getting an authorization code, adding the PKCE proof check, registering new clients on the fly, and showing the user a consent screen, all wrapped up in three short lines of ExpressJS middleware. Add the two middleware calls Descope MCP Auth Router to expose the OAuth endpoint and Descope MCP Bearer Auth to check tokens on every request. And the SDK stands up the mechanics and authorization server needs. It can issue and later validate access tokens, revoke them and attach fine-grained scopes so you can allow sales.read while blocking sales.delete with one line of policy code. Behind the scenes, the middleware manages the entire lifecycle of each access token. Every token carries an expiry time. As that deadline approaches, the SDK automatically exchanges the token for a fresh one and retires the old key, so you never have to juggle expiration, refresh, and rotation yourself. Because the package is built on Express, the identical code runs unchanged on Vercel, Cloudflare workers, or any other JavaScript-friendly host. The result is OAuth-grade gatekeeping without reinventing the protocol, letting you focus on building tools while the spec's security details continue to matter. It's quite a nice addition to MCP. You can try it with the first thing below. As you see, the ecosystem around MCP is expanding quickly with all model providers joining, better authentication systems, and lots of other cool stuff. For ready-made servers, you can explore Anthropic's official examples, skim the community-maintained MCP servers list, or browse smithery.ai, a site where developers publish endpoints for anyone to clone. Now, how do you actually spin up an MCP server? The official SDKs made it super easy. Pick your language, Python, TypeScript, or whichever, and follow the docs. The spec even suggests a nice trick for quick reference. Grab the plain text file llmspec.txt, which contains the entire protocol, paste it into a large context model like Gemini, and just chat with it while you code. If you are unsure about any field or header, Gemini got you. Let's see that in a concrete example. Say you want a server that fetches the weather for any city. In Python, you import the MCP library, create a tiny script, and mark your function with the MCP tool decorator. The function name becomes the tool name, the doc string becomes the description, and the type hints automatically fill the JSON schema. One function, one tool, job done. Fire up the script and you're already hosting a compliant MCP server. To wire that server into Cloud Desktop, for example, you open Cloud Desktop config.json, drop in a new entry under MCP servers, point it to your local command, maybe weather.py, and restart the app. From that moment on, every time you ask what's the weather in Sacramento, the MCP client sees your get weather tool, calls it, and replies with the forecast. Using servers inside custom code is just as painless. The OpenAI agent SDK treats any MCP endpoint as a native tool. Langchain does the same through Langchain MCP adapters, and Llama Index mirrors the pattern with Llama Index Tools MCP. Crew AI has also built-in hooks, so most of the agent ecosystem now speaks MCP out of the box too, and so are the models. If you rather see raw code, Entropic's Quick Start Agent repo is a good place to start. One notebook defines three tools, a reflection helper, a calculator, and a brave search wrapper plugs them into an agent, and then you can ask any question, like, what's the best restaurant in Quebec City? The agent then decides on its own to hit the web search tool and answers with a short list, Tanière, Harvey, and Le Saint-Amour. In short, write a function, decorate it, list it in your client config, and then every MCP aware agent can call it. The rest of the ecosystem, Agent SDK, Langchain, Lama Index, Cree AI, LangGraph, etc., take care of the plumbing so you can stay focused on what the tool actually does. Google also even recently added the A2A or Agent to Agent conversation protocol. This new protocol fills the gap that MCP deliberately leaves open. MCP lets an agent reach out to tools, a weather API, an SQL query runner, a PDF parser, whatever, 
but sometimes the thing you need is another self-contained agent that can plan trips, optimize shipping routes, or handle accounting rules on its own stack. A2A gives those agents a common language, one agent bundles up a task, sends it across the network, and the remote agent answers with the results. No shared database or code base required. The recommended workflow is to use MCP's resource endpoint to discover which remote agent exists, then switch to A2A to have the actual back and forth conversation between the two agents. If you want to get started right now, Google published three small reference projects to show the idea in practice. One written with their own lightweight SDK, one rebuilt in LangGraph, and one in Crew AI. So you can open a terminal, run both ends locally, and watch one agent delegate a job to the other in a few lines of code. It turns out that once discovery and message formatting are handled, agent-to-agent -agent hands off are no order than calling any other HTTP service. So if you were still wondering, this is what MCP and now A2A are built for. Instead of pouring hours into bespoke integrations, you spin up an MCP server once and every compliant client from your IDE to tomorrow's ChatGPT desktop plugs in and plays. We will need smarter ways to trim or summarize long conversations and, just as important, proper built-in monitoring, such as a simple log that shows which tools were called, how long they ran, and where they failed. But the core plumbing is solid and ready to ship quite fast. So the next time you are about to copy-paste the same GitHub integration for the fourth production project, pause. Wrap that code in a tiny MCP server, add Descope's three lines OAuth wrapper, and get back to the feature your users actually care about. If this walkthrough shaved a few hours off your researching or boilerplate, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your teammates that are still not using MCP. And subscribe to the channel to learn more. If you want to go further into MCP, I strongly recommend watching the authors that gave a 1 hour and 44 minute deep dive on YouTube, which you can find the link below in the description. I also invite you to check out the agents course we released with Towards AI and Decoding ML where we show how to best leverage MCP and deploy an agent on A2A and use it in the course. It's also linked in the description below. On that, I hope you enjoyed this overview of MCP and better understand its reason to be and potential. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.